I want you to turn with me to the book of Hebrews. This is not an easy place when you get up here. <laughs> Those of you that spend time up here like MC or whatever, you know what I'm talking about. We have to, we have to be in encouraged and to encourage one another. There is a word that I believe the Lord has given. It's found in Hebrews chapter 4. If you will turn there and stand with us. <clears throat> All right. Are you ready to say amen? Verse 14. We're going to read all the way down from 14 through verse 10 in chapter 5. So let's read responsibly beginning. At verse 14, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into heaven, the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And no man taketh this honor to himself, but he that is called of God as was Aaron. As he saith also in another place, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. together, call of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Praise God. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you have given to us. We are to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for the body of Christ. I pray that your words, Lord God, that uh, spoken by me today may be helpful and encouraging and may it build the lives, O oh God, of your people. And may someone get a hold of something, God, that will bring about a change in their lives. I thank you in advance in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Some time ago, I was talking to Toyika, and uh, I asked her, I was listening to her testimony. She was sharing how in a I'm sure you heard her. One day she was up here. I'm not sure. I think, I don't know if she was announcements or whatever, but she was sharing that. Um, she remember when she was in a certain state and it was so difficult to hear what God was saying to her. It just seems like she was so far from it, looking at her personal condition and everything. And so I was just directed to ask her, what, what, uh, back up, but before, the last thing she shared was that, and now she is in a place where, and she's out of that. She's out of that state of oppression. 
financially and um, God did what he said. So I think I was asking her, what, 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 were, what did you do? What took place? Something that I can pass on to others because people hear me and they may not hear me. <laughs> Because I say, they say, well, he's a preacher, you know, he's supposed to. But every now and then, you know, it's good to hear from somebody that's not a preacher. But yet they have either applied the principles and were faithful, hanging in there, and begin to see God bring an increase. So I didn't, I didn't plan this. And she didn't know I was going to call her. This was just as I was standing right there. So, Toy, I want you to just briefly come, and the very first thing, if you can remember, I ask you, what, what, uh, what did you do? What, what, you know, looking back, uh, just, just what took place? I mean, what can we learn about your going through and everything? So, let me get you this mic here. And I'm, I'm, I'm about trying to iterate to, in every way I know how to get across the simplicity of what God says. So if you can remember, I don't know if you can remember what, I, what she said, but uh, more than likely she can because she didn't have to make it up. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? I mean, you know, just take a moment and... You know, just highlight a little where you were and how it was difficult, but because I asked her, what did you do? I mean, you something had to change to bring you from point A to B. God bless mom and dad. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, I am on the spot. <laughs> um, so, just, a, I guess, a little bit of before um, when I, I was, I guess, just, I just felt like I was just in a, a state that I could not get out of. I was um, financially just oppressed, and I don't care what I tried, what I did, I was tithing faithfully, and um, that was one thing. That was, like, one of the major things because it was just so – it was just, like – it seemed like it was just impossible, and I had literally and mentally had just said, well, maybe – you know, maybe that doesn't apply to me in terms of being being from under this oppression. And so I, I could literally feel myself just trying to brace myself under the weight of it. And I, that, I, that was my life. That's what it was going to be. This was going to be okay. Um, and, and I was just trying to, it was not hard. I mean, it was not easy. It was very difficult because I just felt like nothing really was working mm -hmm. to break that. And it was um, it was it was a trying time, not only because it, of the finances, but it played on me mentally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, but there was um, a, a time, and this was some a few years ago, not too long ago, that um, I had just come through um, a financial thing. It was a cyclical thing. Let me just tell you, it was not this major thing, and then you know it would be like these waves of. Oh, I got a little bit of relief in there. Here it comes right back. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but it, so it was after one of those waves and I had just come through something, the need had been met, you know, thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, waiting for the next one. But um, it was in that, that the Lord, um, one morning I was on my way to work. I, know, I remember this specifically. Um, I was on my way to work and this this scripture in in revelations it just came up and and it was essentially it's just like you know and all things were created um no and for that pleasure all things are and were created mm -hmm. and and it was just i guess it was the lord just kind of opening that up to me mm -hmm. that um we are all created for god's purpose we all know that he created man for himself mm -hmm. but even he knew when the fall would happen and he knew that there would be a disconnect, mm -hmm. but he still made us for him. Yes. And so he also understood every trial, every test, every hardship, every disappointment mm -hmm. 
that man would face. Yes, God. But our purpose didn't change. Our purpose was still to praise and worship him. We were still created for him. That, and it wasn't anything drawn out and bawling in the car or anything like that, but it was truly an illumination. It was like, oh. So he already knows, you know, what I will be facing, what I have faced, but he, th there is still that, you still have the capability and you still have the ability to yes. praise him yes. in spite of yes. the circumstance. And, you know, people say that a lot. Uh -huh. But it was that revelation of that scripture that had nothing to do with what I was doing at the time. It was just that that scripture came up to me and that we were created for him. Yes. So whatever state that we find ourselves in, we still, it might hurt. It may even pain you just to do this. Yes, yes. But as I think Reverend Denise was saying, you know, as you exercise it more, you might start it in natural. Mm -hmm. But when the spirit hits you, then, you know, yes. you could do this. Yeah. <laughs> and then you could do this. And then you might, you know, add the other arm, you know. <laughs> but it was just that understanding is like, Toy, I don't care. And, and because, and, and I will say this, in all of that hardship, financial, I will give a shout out to my grandparents. <laughs> Many a day. They just don't even know. <laughs> yeah. <It's> all right. <laughs> yes, God. Um that even in, in those trials and the hard places and things, God was still faithful to me. Amen. He met each and every need. Even, you know, when I didn't see a way out, I just always made in that, that instance. Mm -hmm. But he, I mean, I, and so it was like the rehearsing, you know, you remember when this happened and right in the nick of time, mm -hmm. you know, you got another extension or mm -hmm. somebody blessed you or, um, you know, I bless you with this job. And the job that I just didn't, wasn't even seeking for, but the door was open. And in that open door at that particular job, there were, I've never heard of a company, and I know they used to do it, not so much um, now. But when I first started at this job, they give you, um, we got a June bonus that was based on, uh, I think, let me see, wait a minute. That was based on the company's performance. And then we got a December bonus that was based on our performance. Mm -hmm. And they will always say, you know, these are not guaranteed bonuses. Mm -hmm. Those bonuses were always strategic for me. <laughs> <laughs> and they were, you know, there's not a guarantee. So they always say, we anticipate since I've been there and now January will be 15 years. We have never not gotten a bonus. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was not unbeknownst to me. I'm just, you know, I started and I was like kind of a little disappointed because I was on the phones all day. And, um, and I, I had left that, actually did that, was at a job, but I wasn't doing that. And then I was back at a job doing that again. And I was like, mm. but I didn't complain. I was grateful for the job. But, um, but in that, the Lord was just showing his faithfulness. You know, I got you the job. And then it started blessing me on this job with just favor people that knew about me and knew of me and I had no idea. My manager even shared something like when they get together and decide raises for the department, they have to decide between this associate is doing X, Y, Z sometimes and this associate doing X, Y, Z. And she said, so there were many times and I didn't know this because they never tell you this. She said, you know, your name will always come up because you were consistent, always a high performer. And, and when it came to promotion, and I wasn't seeking, you didn't really, you didn't really seek it. They would say, hey, you know, you did this, and so now you're ready for the next level. She said, Toy, your name will always come up. And she told me this. I didn't, and she's not even my manager anymore. We're actually on par with each other. We're on, we have the same manager now. And she said, um, she said, I really think it, you know, she said, we just have an issue. We have a race issue. And I was like, mm, that's fine. I said, it didn't change anything. I said, that's good. But the Lord was still blessed in spite of that. I was still getting raises and this, that, and the other, asking me to do different assignments. And so he was just showing me all the time. And it just, I've been faithful. And he did. And it was in that rehearsing of what he brought me through, even when I couldn't see my way out, coupled with the fact that I have the ability mm -hmm. to praise him, even when it's in the darkest hour, I could still praise him. And so that's what I would do. Yes. And it was a change of attitude about praising the Lord. Amen. That's what I wanted you to hear. That's what I wanted you to hear.
It ain't something that I'm conjuring up. It's something that the Lord spoke to me years ago. And the Lord, he said, I would change a lot of things for my people. If I could just get them to change their attitude. I've said this 10, 15 years. You've heard me, right? Because it came from the Lord. And so that, that particular time, I said, what is it? What, what did you do? What did you discover? And when she said, I, number one, I was determined to be thankful. I said, oh, there it is right there. There it is because the Holy Ghost was, over the years, he would say, either be thankful, just praise me, and so it's like coming in alignment with what the Lord really wants. If you can just do that. Come on, somebody, let's give God some prayer. <laughs> Actually, we can, we, can, we can just go home with that. Because if everybody could get a hold of that, in a little while, your situation would change. Nobody can pray you through it. Nobody can change it for you but God alone. And that's my labor. That's my labor to get across to God's people. God is for us. He is not against us. And there are others that it's just a matter of that Break it out of that cocoon, like Denny said. They're going to see some changes because they're on the right track. They have learned that same thing about praising God. And it's just a matter of time that it's going to be a breakthrough. I want to encourage you. There's no magic to this thing. Hallelujah. And God does not play favorites. But the Bible says to everyone that worketh righteousness, they're accepted with him. I don't know about you, but that makes me want to praise him. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. I thank him. I, 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 I feel like just in drafting someone to praise him, but I'm, I'm going to refrain and go on to the word of God. But... Uh, God is so good, I, I tell you. I remember that too. I remember when I was going through, it was so, hey, let me say this here concerning what I told you. Many years ago, and he had, had me praying for her just like he do all of you at different times. So he said, uh, he was just kind of showing me where she was. She was a little discouraged and so on. And I said, well, Lord, what can, what do you want, what can be done? He said, there's nothing can be done. I told her what I was going to do. So it's like he says that to us. There's nothing else that I can do until people believe what I say. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But somehow she got a hold of it and was determined that she was going to bless him in spite of the situation. Anybody hear what I'm saying? I wonder if you can stand up with me. Let's just give him some praise and thanks because he's deserving. You know, you don't, I, I don't want to wait until everything looks good. Because that's seeing faith. Isn't that right? That's not the kind of faith that pleases God. The kind of faith that pleases God is when I can praise him in faith knowing that he has the integrity. What a wonderful God. What a marvelous Savior. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Something about praise. You say, well, why he want... One young man told me, he said this, he asked God, he said, well, God, are, is God on some ego trip? He need, he need praise or something? I said, no, it's, it's for us. It's for us. It's for us. So when we praise God, God breaks chains. He breaks fetters.
there's no way we can stay in a situation that's oppressing us if we become praisers. They don't match. They don't mix. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you don't believe it, try it. God is good. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. I tried to share with you what God taught me. And uh, he taught me and and I know that this is something about the Lord. Moses learned God's ways. And one of those ways is praise him in faith. You know, don't wait for the victory. Praise him. Hallelujah. I, I so appreciate the body of Christ. I want to see the body just come to the state that and and the and in the fullness of the blessings that God has, both spiritually and otherwise. And the few principles that I've learned, it's like I had to learn, right? And over and over and over again, I found myself going through unnecessarily. And the Lord would just keep right on saying it. He said, son, if you just thank me and praise me. So he was pretty much saying, it's a faith walk. It's a faith walk. You act like it's done before it's done. Isn't that right? <laughs> God is good. I love him. I thank him for all the things that he's doing. I hope that encouraged somebody. Let's go to Hebrews now. Um, hope not to be with you long. Hebrews chapter 4. This is what I believe the Spirit of God, one of the things that he was sharing with us. I know there are a lot of people are going through challenges at this time. And some of the things a person may feel like, why is this really happening to me? But um, the, the fact that you are in the light and there's darkness in this world, even if you did everything right, you were going to face some opposition. Isn't that right? So, uh, again, Hebrews 5 says, 4 says, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the son of God, seeing that we have a great high priest, let us hold fast, that word fast in the, in the, in the Greek means firm, our profession or confession. Now he was dealing with them about their confession of faith because some of them were thinking, contemplating turning back. Verse 15 says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So the first four verses in chapter five deals with the qualifications for a high priest. And then the next few verses um, deal with the fact that Christ met that those qualifications. So I want to talk a little about our great high priest, our great high priest, Jesus Christ. The, the studies were saying that the uh, writer of this book, Hebrews, he picks up this thought about the high priest. He had to, this, this, this whole thing is about a better covenant and about our great high priest. This, the essence of it is that. And the verse 17 in chapter two, it reads, wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, just talking about Jesus, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest or faithful high priest in things pertaining to God 
to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. And then chapter three, verse one says, wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. So he said a few things there and it looked like he interjected some things here about uh, some warnings. And then he picks it back up again at the latter part of chapter four after he talked about uh, let us uh, labor to enter into the rest of God. So at this point here, verse 14, this is where he picks it back up. He had a lot of things to say about the high priest. And um, so I was, as I was looking at that, um, the introductory part was saying how the writer of the Hebrews, some say it was Paul, some say it was Barnabas, some say it was Apollos. So I don't think they really know who wrote Hebrews. Um, but anyway, the writer of the Hebrews by the Holy Spirit was concerned about their partial failure. He was concerned about the weaknesses that was going on. And so he began to turn to the mediator and high priest, which is Christ. And so he encourages the readers to the steadfastness in, in their confession and in their commitment. And how many know that we're in a time where it's very, very important that we encourage one another on a regular basis to be steadfast? There's so many things that are, are coming our way. And not only by media, but they're coming our way, sometimes through others that are discouraged and, and sometimes people that are not saved who don't have hope. But we must be anchored and settled in our faith and who we believe in. And knowing that whatever goes on down here, God still has our back. He's with us and he promised never to leave us nor to forsake us. So the writer wanted to encourage them because like I said, some of them, uh, they were accustomed to the old Leviticus system. They were, they were concerned or they, uh, uh, at this point in their lives, they were no longer involved in the old sacrifice, sacrificial systems like they knew all their lives. So try and picture these people here were taken out of that when they got saved. When they met Christ, they came out of that whole system and Paul or whoever they, they were, whoever brought them to the Lord, began to teach them now about another way and another high priest. But some of them uh, that may have uh, been still living while Christ was on the earth they still didn't understand him to be a high priest because, well, like I said, the whole Levitical system, they would go into the, you know, they would take their offerings to the priest and they, to the door of the tabernacle and the priest would take the offering and then he would offer it up, this kind of thing. And so that went on. That's how they lived for years. So now when they get saved, they're pulled out of that system altogether. No more offering up of sacrifices because the writer and the others that whoever they got saved by begin to tell them that it's no longer that. Now it's Christ. So to believe, to take them out of something that they're so familiar with. So it worked for a while, but after they started getting persecuted and being oppressed for their faith, then discouragement began to set in. And so then, you know, like how Satan is, he'll begin to say, you know, you put all, let all that go. You need to go on back to that old system again, you know. And uh, because naturally they had friends that were not converted that were still under that old system. So, you know, you kind of have to understand where they were. Uh, they had lost some of the friends and, and loved ones there that didn't, they weren't saved. And here they were trying to really hold fast to what they really weren't sure, totally sure about. And then the writer comes down, he's telling them about a high priest, which when Christ walked the face of the earth, uh, he said nothing about being his high priestly role. He said nothing about the, uh, uh, the temple. And uh, so, you, you, you know, they, they couldn't relate to that. And... Uh, so he begins to give them some insight and information and understanding 
concerning Christ's high priestly role. So verse 14 says, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Or he was saying to them, hold firm to your commitment concerning Christ. You profess Jesus Christ as your savior, your Lord. Don't let it go. You know, it's something to this thing. And uh, he's saying you're under a better covenant. So he had, they had to take time and explain. They brought, brought them back to the old system. But then he began to explain to them that Christ and all of the, the, the new laws and, and everything that pertain to grace and salvation was superior to all of that. And because, uh, you know, it's like, uh, as I often say before, like when I was young and uh, I had my relatives playing these games with me uh, uh, and some of us, because they, didn't, they knew we didn't know the value of money. And uh, they would give us, let me see, 10 pennies and uh, say, which one would you rather have? Ten, they'd give us a bunch of pennies or, or, or silver dollar. So, you know, we'd take the 10 pennies because there were a lot of them. We didn't know the value. And they enjoyed playing those games because they knew we were only kids. That's how we looked at things, right? And so it was important for them to tell them about what they had. You and I have a lot going for us. We have everything going for us. And it's so important to begin to, as you heard Tori earlier, rehearse the victories that God brought you through. Isn't that right? You remember when David had to face a giant? When he had to face this giant, David, he could have said, good God, this, this, I can't handle this, God. I've never had nothing like this before. But what did David do? He began to rehearse his victories. He said, I remember when I was tending those few sheep and there was a lion came up against those sheep and I experienced the anointing. It came over me and boy, there was strength from on high. I grabbed a hold of that old lion and I slew him with my bare hands. And, and then I guess he went on to say, you know what, I remember also there was a bear that came up against the flock. And I remember how that anointing came over me. And when that anointing came over me, it made me superhuman. And I took that old bear by its whiskers and I defeated that bear. Boy, it gave him some muscles. And all of a sudden he says, you know, this old uncircumcised Philistine, that same anointing, hallelujah, that came over me to defeat that lion, that same anointing that came over me to defeat that bear is going to come over me and I'm going to slay that old giant. Hallelujah. Something happened when you start to rehearse your victories. I want you to look at somebody and say, start rehearsing your victories. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. I've had to do that myself. Sometimes you get into dark places and you begin, the devil say, how are you going to get out of this? And then you begin to rehearse your victories in the same God that brought me through. My Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell him, put the word on him. Isn't that right? Yeah. He that has begun a good work in me, he will perform it. He'll complete it until the day of Christ. Hallelujah. Keep putting the word on him. Hallelujah. And the word will, will do something. So Christ, according to verse 14, entered the heavenly. He entered the heavenly rest. Listen to this, so he could bring his people into it. You cannot take people where you've never been. I was, there was a man on the side of the road in my hometown. He was trying to point people to the place called Fayetteville and he had never been. He said, but it's, uh, it's so and so and so, but he'd never been. That's all he heard, but he didn't know. I want you to look at somebody and say, you can only take people as far as you've been. 
So the good thing is this. God takes us through trials and shows us it's overcoming strength so that we can take people from where they are and show them his mighty strength. Isn't that right? God is a good God. He's a great God. Hallelujah. I remember. Hallelujah. As Joseph, remember when old Joseph was down, uh, he had, uh, 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 no, there was a butler and a baker. And all of a sudden, it was time for Joseph to, pr to be promoted. And uh, one of them says, because uh, Joseph told him, don't forget me. He interpreted the dream, said, don't forget me whenever you get before the king. And they went on, and naturally, it wasn't time, so they forgot. Yeah. Two years later, when it was time, look at somebody said, when the time comes, people don't forget no more. People remember the things that are very vital. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. God brings just like he brought to her. He brought something to her, that revelation. And there's some of you, God is about to give you a revelation that's going to change the course of your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's that illumination that comes from God that helps us to think and do differently. So Christ entered the heavenly rest so he could bring his people into it. My goodness. The Hebrews didn't understand Christ in his high priestly role. But listen, he performed no priestly functions when he was on earth. And they, he contradicted the whole Jewish conception of priesthood while he was here on earth. And he claimed no special privileges of access to the temple. So it was very difficult for them to see him even when, they, uh, uh, when he went into the heaven as a high priest. So now they're, you know, they needed explanation, right? They needed understanding as to his role now. And so his high priestly role is this. He is ever in the presence of God making intercessions for you and I. So I said, Lord, I said, now I can't relate to the Levitical system. All I know is what I read. I wasn't there. I've never seen it in operation. So I could say that doesn't pertain to me. So how, if I'm going to get the maximum out of this, I need a better understanding because I've never visited that. And, 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 and so I said, God, can you give me an example? He said, yeah. He said, you can understand the role of an attorney or a lawyer, can't you? I said, uh, yeah. And the more I thought about that, a, a, an attorney or a lawyer, they act on the behalf of their client. Isn't that right? What they do is gather all the information from the client, right? And now the client must be truthful. Are you, you hearing what I'm saying? Because if the client is not truthful, guess what will happen? They get up there trying to represent them, and all of a sudden something come out. Then the lawyer begin, they're puzzled because now they can't adequately represent them because the client wasn't truthful in their, what they gave. Anybody hear what I'm saying? In the same way with us. If we're going to let Jesus represent us, we got to come with confidence. We're going to have to be honest. If we got, listen to this. If you got issues, you need to tell Jesus about it. Isn't that right? Jesus is our advocate. Jesus is our lawyer. And since he is our advocate, he is there to plead our case before the righteous judge. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's his role now. And so Jesus wants us to come with confidence to him. And he wants us to share our hurts and pain, where we've gone and what we're going through. He wants us to, to he, you must tell him just like you would a lawyer so he can adequately represent you. Somebody said, well, he knows everything ain't right. Although he knows everything, he still wants us to put the confidence in him so he can adequately represent us. Isn't that right? I, I, I was, and as God was showing me that, it was like, boy, so what happens is if, if a person, they hold back on some stuff, if a client hold back on stuff, they won't tell the lawyer, they don't want the lawyer to know, then it can be embarrassing. Isn't that right? So I could understand that, but the lawyer is strictly there to represent the client. And listen to this. What did he tell the client most of the time when he get in court? You don't say nothing. 
Y'all got to hear what I'm saying because this applies to us too. A lot of times we get in situation and we're trying to defend ourselves and it's like he's saying, you don't say nothing. I'm supposed to represent you before the Father. Isn't that right? Look, look at somebody say, hush your mouth and let God adequately represent you. Come on, let's give God some praise. You know, you've seen these cases where the lawyer, is, he's really trying to represent and he's, he's strictly told the clients, now you don't say nothing. I'm supposed to do the talking. Isn't that right? So they get up there, all of a sudden something provokes them and they say something and the lawyer like, you got to be quiet. I, I don't want you trying to, because see, I, I've got everything and I know about the system. Oh, you'll hear what I'm saying. You see, God has been, he was up there. He knows what's going on up there. But I've never been there. I don't know what the father's thinking. Oh, you hear what I'm saying. So I've got to depend on the mediator. Isn't that right? To adequately represent me. So if he say be quiet, then I must be quiet. You go through a trial and, it, and you feel like it's unfair. Now don't you go mouthing off now because see, the lawyer is going to represent you. But like he says, he said, but I need you to be quiet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't say a word. Because anything you say could be hell against you. <laughs> Come on, somebody. God is good. So although I could not relate to those systems, I could relate to the role of an attorney. They are there. And I know we pay them, but they are still there to make sure that this case is won on our behalf. Isn't that right? Same way with Jesus. Hallelujah. Same way with Jesus. Christ entered the heavenlies so he could bring his people into it. Hallelujah. The Hebrews didn't understand Christ in his high priestly role because he said nothing on earth about him. And although we can't relate to the high priest, but we can relate to the attorney, the lawyer, someone to represent us. The father sent Jesus on a mission to save the world. And he, listen to this, he is qualified to preserve the saints. Have you ever tried to preserve your own self? There are too many things we don't know. We don't have the kind of strength to preserve ourselves. There are forces out there we can't even see that are against us. We cannot adequately preserve ourselves. We must depend on the advocate. Isn't that right? We've got to depend on him. He is there to represent us and to preserve us. He's qualified to adequately preserve us the Bible says he that has begun a good work in you will perform it to the day of Christ now listen to this Jesus first of all when we were sinners and aliens enemies Christ died for us now we didn't have anything to do with that did we I'm, I'm, I'm pointing out that how adequate God is and how qualified he is to preserve us. So while we were enemies, we weren't thinking about God. It was in the heart of God to send his son. So he sent his son and he paid a price that we could never pay. So that was the first step. And now he asked us, if you believe, then you, then you can be saved. So then we hear the gospel preached. And when we hear this gospel preached, all of a sudden we believe. And once we believe, Christ washes away our sins, writes our name in the book of life, and he brings us into his kingdom. He gives us of his Holy Spirit. Are y'all still with me? All this is not something that we can do, right? He's qualified. Look at somebody say, he's qualified. 
And not only that, he didn't stop there now. He baptizes us with the Holy Ghost, give us the power to live for him. See, if you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost, you don't have that dunamis, that dynamite, that power to, 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 to resist the devil and the authority to operate on this earth against the evil forces, right? But you see, we had nothing to do with that. But God gave us, he baptized us in the Holy Ghost, giving us the power now so that we could live and live a victorious life. Isn't that right? Remember, he's still qualified, right? He's, he, look at somebody say, he's qualified. But he didn't stop there now. Jesus goes into heaven and operates at, in his high priestly role as a lawyer, as we've just been talking about, right? Pleading our cause. It doesn't stop there. But then what he does is puts on our brothers and sisters heart and mind when we are going through and when we can't pray for ourselves. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So God is qualified to keep us. We cannot keep ourselves, but what we can do is offer praise and thanksgiving unto God. Join me. Let's praise him a little bit. He's worthy. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. One time I made the mistake of thinking I could keep myself. And that didn't last too long. Saints of God, may I say to you, it's God that keeps us. Every day to the week. I remember sometimes when I was off targets and saying stuff that I shouldn't say. And I told you, when, just here recently when I was on vacation, man, this thing was attacking my mind. So, and I was so mad. I was so frustrated. I was like, man, I can't believe I'm, this is going on. The Lord spoke to her and said, call these intercessors. Now, I'm, I'm making a point. You cannot keep yourself. So this must be settled in our hearts if we're going to serve the Lord. Isn't that right? She calls some intercessors. I don't know who she calls. So later on in the afternoon, all of a sudden, something just swept through my mind. I had a total mind change, but a mind change that was in line with God. So I'm feeling right good. Okay, I prayed that thing through. And then all of a sudden, Wanda says, well, I call, I call the intercessors. So I said, oh, Okay. <laughs> you cannot keep yourself. God is working when you have no idea he's working. And even now, you may be going through something, but God's got you on somebody's mind right now. And can I say this? He's not going to finish. If he had that person pray for a while, when they get tired, he'll put you on somebody else's mind until this thing is prayed through. And the next thing you know, you get in victory, but it ain't you. Look at somebody say, it ain't you. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give God some glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> glory to God. <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> glory to God. What a wonderful savior. He's got it all. He's qualified. My God, he's qualified. Having learned, this is Jesus, through actual experience, the uttermost needs of human weaknesses because he became man, right? He was trained for this high priestly role. Somebody say he was trained. He was trained for this high priestly role in, in heaven that he was supposed to come into him, which involved suffering. Hallelujah. But he couldn't get there except through suffering. Do you remember the garden when he went into the garden? Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> My God, he went into the garden. In the garden, he was contemplating the horrors of the cross and the take on sin, which he's never done, and the separation of God his father, which had never, 
ever been done. And so you know the powers of evil, they were taking advantage of that moment here. And there he was in the garden there, agonizing as like great uh, drops of blood. He was so intense in his warfare because he feared he didn't want to be left in hell. The Bible says, um, uh, and David, he said, it's, he has not left my soul in hell. He went down to the lower parts, of, but that man prayed so hard. He prayed so intense that there was like great drops of sweat was like great drops of blood and he prayed and prayed and he was exhausted but there came angels there to strengthen him so that he could go on through hallelujah and so he prayed again he went to look for some help with the disciples and they were so sleepy and so drugged out and so they were there they were he came he said can't y'all watch with me for one little hour and they were sitting there like you know, they didn't know what to say because he had gone twice asking for help. And the second time, they, 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 they didn't have no words because it's like, but the Lord strengthened him. He strengthened him. And so he went back the last time and he prayed it on through. My God, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. But guess what, saints? You gotta imagine God that never was separated from his father, never took on sin. He's holy, just, and righteous. He cannot sin. But in order for you and I to enjoy the freedom, he had to take on sin. And he took on sin, and it got so, and he knew that the moment that he took on sin, there was a separation from his relationship with God. And when that happened, he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But let me tell you, he paid a price that you and I would enjoy the freedom that we have. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the, least, and the least we could do is give him praise. Isn't that right? The least we could do to offer thanksgiving to God. Join me in giving God praise. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, he suffered, bled, and died even as a criminal for you and I and he had done nobody wrong. Hallelujah, he is good and he deserves praise. 365 days to the year, he deserves glory. Hallelujah, the Bible says from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. I don't know about you, but it makes me wanna praise God when I think of the goodness of God and all that he's done for me, that something inside of me cries out and say, I thank God for saving me. God is a good God. Trials may come, circumstances may come, but God is a good God. Tribulation may come, persecution may come, rejection may come, but God is still on the throne. God is still a good God. He's still the El Shaddai. He's still the Prince of Peace. He's still the Rose of Sharon. Hallelujah. I feel like praising him. I feel like magnifying him. Hallelujah to the lamb. Hallelujah to the lamb. Glory to God. Glory to God that he's still the lion. He's still the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah, you haven't seen him roar at your situation. You haven't seen him work for you yet, but start to praise God and determine that I'm gonna praise him in the midst of everything that I go through and watch the lion rise up on your behalf. Watch the lion, hallelujah. He's a good God, he's a good God, he's a good God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Oh, let's praise him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He done me nothing but good. And he'll do you nothing but good. Let's don't make him beg for praise that do his name. Give him his due. Give him his honor. Give him his glory. Hallelujah. Somebody help me praise the living Christ. Hallelujah, glory to God, glory to God, hallelujah, 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory to God. And go, hallelujah. And God says, he says, you can, you can count on it. He said, when I tell you something, you can take it to the bank. And you, you don't have to let time and circumstances change your mind. For God says, what I say, I mean. And what I mean, I say. And he said, my word will not return void, but it shall accomplish what I please. Whatever I send it out to accomplish, it's going to accomplish what I send it out to do. God is faithful, somebody. Shout glory to the Lamb of God. God is a good God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. It is our adversary that would try to paint a bad picture about the great Savior, this great high priest. He's been through and tempted in every way that a man can be tempted to. But the Bible says it's yet without sin. Um, you see, I've been tempted in some areas, uh, and some of the areas I've failed. Uh, so I can only take people where I've been, uh, but not so with him. He was tempted in every way, but the Bible says yet without sin. Uh, so he can tell me how to succeed. Uh, you got to listen to his wisdom. When he gives you wisdom, you can trust what he says. Uh, you can trust what he says uh, because he's been there. And and he's done that and he knows what he's saying somebody let's give God some praise would you stand on your feet and let's give God some glory God is worthy to be praised hallelujah hallelujah glory to the Lamb of God glory to God we have a great high priest a great high priest he's ever on the right hand of the Father making intercessions for you don't make any mistake about it. Uh, you're not keeping yourself. Uh, hallelujah. So you owe God praise. And I owe God praise. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, the Bible says, um, or the songwriter says, uh, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. Can we get into praise to him? Praise to the Lord. Praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory. Ah, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. God is counting on you to be faithful. He knows what he has for you and he's going to bring it to pass. Let's be faithful now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, let God be magnified. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Hallelujah.